So now we're going to talk a little bit about using the legs to defend different types of attacks that your opponent can do with their own legs. Now there's a lot of confusion about this in Wing Chun because you see some Wing Chun Sifus uh, teach us students to use their legs a lot to defend incoming kicks or incoming knee strikes and other Sifus basically tell you not to do it at all. Uh, there is definitely a time and a place for using your legs to stop leg attacks, um, but it's not the most common situation. I don't recommend using your legs to stop kicks at distance, okay? Nowadays you have people who give you a lot of very powerful low shots, and if you try to lift up your leg to block a kick, uh, that can put you in a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of pain because, you know, unless you're kicking banana trees all day and your shins are really hard, I would not recommend using your shins to stop somebody's low Muay Thai kick because uh, the results are going to be quite disastrous. Um, and in fact, it's not even necessary. If, if somebody wants to give you a kick, just like any other attack, if I stay in the same place and block it with my leg, I'm eating this full power and this is not recommended. It's really easy. If he wants to give me a kick and he steps in, all I need to do is step in and punch him. Right? I don't even need to worry about blocking his kick or stopping him or, or doing anything like that. And then it's a lot less power intensive and damaging to my own body. But if we're in a situation when we're up close, right, let's say he's holding onto my arms, I'm not able to punch him, my arms are not free to defend, I'm not free to go forward, and he were, for example, to give me a knee strike to the side, this would be a situation where I would have no choice but to use my leg to defend. Now the inside leg, we call this one bonger because it's sim it looks similar to the bong sao movement, all right? And I'm using this on the inside of the thigh instead of the shin. So this is bonger, I would attack him with it and then immediately counter attack this way here. If he gave me a knee on the other side and I used the same leg, we would use this one here, we call this one tanger, all right? And this again opens up this line here, I'm nice and protected, and then I can immediately follow up with a knee attack here. Uh, so bong and tanger actually work much better as knee defenses at close range than they do as kick defenses at long range. They can be done and can be used as kick defenses, however, I uh, would not recommend it. Uh, if he gives me a straight kick and I'm not able to move forward, which is my normal MO in Wing Chun, uh, and I'm basically caught flat-footed, then I do have the option to basically use my leg to defend and then go in and go forward. But if you notice, I'm not actually blocking my shin against his shin here. As his kick comes in, I circle, I let this one ride, and I go into a stance and I follow up. This tangerk, by the way, is often confused with something called yapgerk. There's actually no such movement in Wing Chun called yapgerk. Yap gerk in Cantonese just means to insert your leg into your opponent's stance. So when you use a tan gurk and you step in, this action is called yap gurk, right? But the movement itself is not called yap gurk, this is called tan gurk. So there's really no such leg movement called yap gurk. There's a very common misconception about the leg technique.